Today's first impressions is on Odd Sparks, an automation adventure. This is the demo, which has about three hours of total content. I played around two hours of it, and I'm fairly sure that it's probably a lot more than just a basic three hours for me because I'm stupid. So far, however, I have really enjoyed this. It's a really cute feel, and the story really progresses well. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with lots of automation and crafting and things. There is a multiplayer available on this demo as well, and that is in beta. And the full game will go into early access on April 24th. I really enjoyed this game, and I'm really excited to show you what I thought and the things I like and the things that I don't like or that need improving. As always, we'll go through the settings first. I'll show you the character editor, and then we'll jump into the game and I'll show you how it plays. First off, I am really, really happy with how this options menu looks. It's very aesthetically pleasing. It literally has everything you would ever need, and it really does make it a breeze to set it up how you want. You've got your game options, which you can enable your analytics. You've got your aim controls, hold or toggle. You can have your compass on dynamic or static. Show button prompts button prompts in aim mode, camera sensitivity, auto save interval. I like the fact that you can change your auto save interval between longer and shorter, and you can show the player names in multiplayer as well. Your audio settings are fairly simple and straightforward, and I'm happy to say that even at 100% volume, it's not that loud. It's very ambient. It's very much a chill background addition rather than the entire game, which is really nice. You've got your master volume, music volume, sound effects volume, ambience volume, workstation volume, sparks volume, and you can have the sound in background if you so desire. If you're going to be streaming this game or making content, I would very highly recommend putting that on display and graphics you've got your display it starts in windowed full screen which is fantastic you've got your resolution you can also then apply window and resolution which is really awesome your frame limit and v-sync so it starts with unlimited frame rate and then v-sync on or off screen percentage rendering mode and then you've got your graphics settings here as well so you've got aa type quality preset aa quality shadow quality texture quality global illumination quality and post processing you can then also reset the default at the bottom as well, which is really nice. The only thing that I don't like is the fact that you don't apply these settings. They sort of change immediately. And, and the thing with applying it and then hitting an OK button is that it, it gives you a sense of saving and you're always a little bit unsure if that's not there, whether the settings have saved, whether they have changed or whether they're going to revert back. So that's something I would like to see as seamless as it is. It does give me a bit of anxiety when I go through all the settings, get it how I want and then there's nowhere to save it and then finally you've got controls which is in beta, beta. Um, control remapping works but only basic functions for mouse and keyboard exist for now not every action can be remapped there may be bugs such as prompts not updating sorry for any convenience now this is a demo the game's not out yet that is completely fair they know about it and they've let us know as long as that is out when it comes to early access or if it gets fixed fairly quickly after it's released into early access I'm okay with that. There are some re-buttons and mostly you're going to be using your mouse and your WOS in the keys anyway. So it's not a huge problem, but I like the fact that they are trying to add it in. It's just not there yet. Overall, a really complete settings menu that I'm very, very happy with. Your character customization. I love the fact that you can go in and change your, your, your character anytime you can come out into the main menu and change how they look but now though what i will say the customization is very very limited you don't get a lot of choice to sort of choose from but you can randomize and you can then go through and change everything so you've got your skin color eye color hair type and hair color so you can have teeth it's not actually hair type it's hood type i don't know why they've called it hair type but whatevs <laughs> you can change your color of your hair using these buttons here and you can go saturation or you can go sort of very gray and bright and dark and stuff then you've got your clothing pretty much the same type you've got different poncho type so you've got the tail or you've got the default i quite like the tail i think it's cool and then you've got your different pattern here you've got leaves stripes dots spider web and left to right you've got your different colors which again is just a color gradient or you can choose a preset color if you so desire which i think is really cool and then you can change the socks between long and short then after that, you've got two decorations you can choose. You've got your head decoration of single, double, or a row. I think that's really cute. And your brooch, you can change from a circle to an oval. Again, it would be nice to see more 
customization here it's always nice to see more customization overall it's kind of there's still a lot there i would like to see different sort of character types put down you know things like that to really add to the personalization of the character but overall really cute design and i like it quite a lot for the gameplay you can see already it's a very very cute art style it gives people Nintendo vibes or Animal Crossing sort of vibes, but with a very different gameplay. Very open world. You've got your base uh, at the village where you get all your quests and stuff from and you unlock new parts of the story. And then this is your open world. There are a few things that I'm not overly happy with in this area, namely the map. The map isn't very good at all. It does have your main key points here, but it doesn't really show you what are enemies and what aren't and you've got to kind of work it out as you go along also with quests where you've got to find a specific enemy or anything it doesn't show where that is on the map and it doesn't really tell you it's just go find in the wilderness have fun so you kind of end up wandering around sort of aimlessly trying to find the quests and the things that you need to hunt or find or harvest or whatever just generally a zone area map um you know like a green circle it's been used in rpgs for years it's used a lot because it works it allows players to still have to find the thing but it gives you at least a general idea of what it is you're looking for outside of that it's not a terrible map but you know that it's one of these where you got to explore and find and, and stuff like that so i kind of get where they're going for but overall not too amazing your other thing that's quite sort of weird is when you're on top down, you sort of expect to have to click, but clicking doesn't allow you to move. You do have to use WSD for this. You have these different areas here, which are your ancient bases. And what you can do with these is you can build things on them. You learn new recipes for new buildings and stuff as you go through different quests and different stories. And this is where a lot of them are going to have to be based. As of that, you've got your enemies here. And you also have your um, corpses. Now, corpses, it's a little bit grim, but you basically harvest the corpses of dead animals to get gemstones, which you then use to make these sparks. You hunt down trees and forage and stuff to get wood, although you can also use your sawmill and your logger to get wood and planks and stuff. As you go around the uh, area, you will find these ancient shrines, and ancient shrines will have... Um, different things that are going to require of you that are going to allow you to get new abilities unlocked and things which is really kind of cool then you've got your sparks which i'm going to try and get to over here once you get your sparks you are able to use those to gather to start the automation line off so as you can see here i've got a few buildings i've got one that makes me sparks themselves and you require these materials in order to make the spark and then once you've got the spark you can have them so that they're active and they will follow you around and do really cool stuff you basically press space and if you put it onto the path they will walk around on the path and if you put them on uh, a tree they will go and gather tree if you put them on small stones they will go ahead and gather stones and if you take them towards an enemy they will go ahead and take the enemy out really kind of cool really simplistic very very easy to understand and sort of do and you know you just basically go along and keep growing the production line to make more things right so here as you can see we have a logger we can open it we've got 20 logs and that's the maximum and as soon as you take them off they will start cutting trees down again this gives you infinite source of wood and one of the first things that you learn to unlock and work on from that it's very very cool i love the system the dirt path is what you need so they will take the woods from here and you know go certain places so if i put a load of these down on here look we'll get a massive amount of production line going where they're all going to pick up logs and they're all going to walk now they're only allowed to walk on the right hand side so depending on which angle or which way you put them will dictate where they go and what they drop off which is very very useful and handy and then you basically just go from there. You keep growing out. You do all the quests. I'm not going to show you the town because I don't want to give you too many spoilers to the main story and what's going to happen there. And as you grow on, you, you will unlock more things. You will go on more adventures. You will 
find the secret of the ancient uh, civilization and you will have a bloody good time doing it. This game has potential to be massive. There are a few things that I would like to see changed with the inventory specifically. You can't select one or two. You can split and splitting is a little bit annoying once you've got maximum you've got to basically do this as opposed to if i just wanted to put one more in i i i have to split it i can't just put one more in because if i put that in there we get 40 and then it will run through until it runs out of wood and and stuff and it will just keep making these sparks here that really is the only qualm that i've got with the inventory i don't like the fact that the splitting system is such a ball ache it's it's so many just allow me to click one two or right click one two as opposed to having to actually split it and go down a, a bar it's a bit much but yeah this this is odd sparks i think this is going to be great on release um three hours for a demo is fantastic honestly it will give you a really really good idea as to whether you want to play the game and again, the game will come into full re or early access on the 24th of April. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.